next video is the next instalment for A Little Princess, and we're up to chapter 17. That evening, Ermengarde, Betsy, Lottie, and Gertrude were to be seen poking their heads out of their rooms. They all waited until Miss Minchin had turned out the lights and closed her bedroom door. Then, they tiptoed in their nightgowns up to the attic door. Becky was sitting on Sarah's bed, holding her hands over Sarah's eyes. What's happening, Sarah asked Becky as she heard footsteps on the attic stairs. It's a surprise, Becky whispered excitedly. Just then, the door opened. Ermengarde led Betsy, Gertrude and Lottie into the room. Becky took her hands away so that Sarah could see them. What are you doing here, Sarah asked. We brought you something, Ermengarde said. She glanced at the others. Betsy, Gertrude and Lottie had never been in Sarah's room before and they were looking around in shock. Ermengarde coughed to get her atten their attention. The five girls, including Becky, lined up in front of Sarah. Princess Sarah, we would like to present you with something we rescued, Ermengarde began. In a most daring adventure, Betsy added. Lotsey stepped forward and presented the gold locket to Sarah. Tears filled Sarah's eyes and for a few moments she could not think of anything to say. You are all the best friend anyone could ever ask for, she said finally, giving them all a big hug. Suddenly a loud screech at the window made all the girls jump. Hanuman, the monkey, was perched on the sill outside Sarah's window. Everyone except Sarah and Becky screamed and dived under the bed. It's all right, Sarah assured them. They climbed back out and she introduced them to Hanuman. Where, where did he come from? Lottie asked. Right next door. Look, Becky said. She pointed to the wooden plank that connected Sarah's window to Ram Dass's. He comes to visit me all the time, don't you? Sarah said to the monkey. Can you really talk to him, Sarah? Betsy asked. Yes. Honeyman, say hello to my friends, Sarah said. Honeyman turned to the girls, bowed its head and squealed. The girls all giggled. Honeyman perched on Sarah's shoulder while she told the girls a story. They had all insisted that she tell them some more about Princess Sita and Prince Rama. When Sarah arrived at the part about the ten-handed monster, the monkey leapt off her shoulder and landed on Ermengarde's head. The girls all screamed in fright. Miss Minchin poked her head out of her bedroom door. She thought she held her nose upstairs. The girls heard Miss Minchin's door creak open. No one dared say a word until they heard the door close once more. Maybe we'd better save the rest of the story for later, Sarah suggested. She picked Honeyman up and carried it to the window. The girls gathered around to say goodbye to the monkey. At that moment, Miss Minchin entered Sarah's attic room. What is going on here? she asked sharply. The girl spun around and cowered down at the side of her. Miss Minchin had rarely looked so angry. Sarah hid the locket in the palm of her hand. It's not their fault, she said. I, I asked them to come. Miss Minchin clenched her jaw. She turned to her students first. You four, get downstairs immediately, she said in an icy tone. Ermengarde, Betsy, Gertrude and Lottie did not have to be told twice. They scampered quickly out through the door. Becky? You will remain locked in your room for the entire day tomorrow, without meals, Miss Minchin went on. Go. After Becky had rushed away, Miss Minchin turned on Sarah, and you, she began, will perform all her chores in addition to your own. You will go without breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Sarah said at Miss Minchin, but did not say anything. That only made the schoolmistress angrier. Sarah Crew, it is time you learned that real life has... Nothing to do with your little fantasy game, Miss Minchin said. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am, Sarah answered. Miss Minchin turned to go. But I don't believe what you said, Sarah added. Miss Minchin slowly turned and faced Sarah again. Don't tell me you still fancy yourself a princess, she said with a sneer. My God, child, look in a mirror. Sarah continued to stare steadily at Miss Minchin. I am a princess, she said firmly. All girls are, even if they live in tiny old attics, even if they dress in rags, even if they aren't beautiful or young or smart, they're still princesses. Sarah paused. Didn't your father ever tell you that? Miss Minchin stared at her speechless. No, none had ever said that to her. None had ever loved her or even told her that they loved her. But 
she did not tell this to Sarah. Instead, she only became angrier. If I find you up here with any of the other girls again, I'll throw you out into the street, she warned Sarah. Then she stormed out of the room. And that ends that installment for A Little Princess.